A great wise person once said, two must-haves for me are a great book and my iPod. No, wait, that was Kelly Clarkson. Holy shit, I just made a Kelly Clarkson quote. Oh, Jesus. Anyhow, I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout. I am Jeff Moriarty, and we are here to talk about audiobooks for indie authors. Just Evo and I riffing it again in our new shortened format as we work out the kinks in the uh, abbreviated way we're doing things. So I'm going to get right into my beer because uh, the, uh, it's probably the most important part still of the format. I am drinking a Stone Mint Chocolate Imperial Stout, <laughs> which is... I'm going to go with interesting right now. That's, uh, yeah. Valid, valid. Had one of those uh, at Flanny's last year. They, they had a Merkin of that. And uh, yeah, interesting is the right way to say that. It's one of those that you'll have one, and then you'll go, yeah, next year's another good time for, for my next one. I was hoping it would taste like thin mints from the Girl Scouts because then I could drink like 100 of those. Yeah, I don't think so. So um, I'm going to go with the Magion, the Skunk Ape. Their uh, double black IPA. It's not quite a stout. This is International Stout Day, but it, it's black enough. So I'll be I'll be enjoying that as soon as my lovely wife comes up here and gives me a glass, which I forgot to get. But you know, I'll make it work. All right. So I know you can go on at great and incredible uh, length about your experience with audiobooks. So give us the short version. You've been doing these a while. Yeah, audiobooks uh, have been doing it since about 2005 when when we launched patiobooks.com and since that time have been helping hundreds of authors. We have well over 600 uh, titles available now. The vast majority of those, as you know, are self published and self-produced audiobooks. Uh, some are fantastic and I could stack them up against the major competition and then other ones, of course, you know, don't sound quite that good, but it's been it's been quite a ride over the last uh, what is that almost eight years we've been doing this. So good times. Oh, impressive math. So yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes a successful audiobook? What separates the good from the bad? Well, the the biggest thing is an audiobook is an experience, and when you are reading a book as a reader, pages or electrons reading them, you get the voices that are in your head. You get to assign whatever voice you want to, but when you're listening to an audiobook, you get the voice you're given that hits your tympanic membranes of your ears. So obviously, the the presentation is is pretty darned important. If you are if you don't have solid narration skills, uh, you're probably not going to be the the best at making a good audiobook. However, it doesn't have to be um, that ability. Um, I, I know many people who have voices that are kind of meh, but they tell a really good story. They don't read a book. They tell a great story, and even if you don't have the pipes of a 1950s DJ, if you can just tell a really great story, then uh, then that, that goes a long ways. So you don't have to read your book as Mr. Movie Phone. No, gods, please, no, don't do not do that. That would be terrible. Hey, honey, can you give me a glass and an uh, opener? I forgot. Can you edit that out? <laughs> I probably can, <laughs> but I'm not going to. All right. So I'm an indie uh, author. I've got my book written. I mm -hmm. want to foray into the world of audiobooks. What changes do I have to make to my regular book to audioize? Well, technically nothing. I mean, a, a book that is written well, and oh, by the way, Jeff, that means edited and all the other sorts of things we're talking about, of course. I'm, I'm using you as a proxy for everyone else that's in there. Assuming you've done all of that, um, then you're ready to go. Uh, you don't really have to do anything to your book. Obviously, a technical manual is not that fantastic. Note that the Podcasting for Dummies book was not made into an audio book because, wow, that would suck. Um, but really, there's nothing you have to do. There are some things you may want to do, some cleanup that you'll have to do or that you probably should do with it because you'll find that maybe you pick some really stupid names, some characters like Jim Johnson and Jeffrey James, and people are going to be confused by those two things. Lots of crappy attribution that he said, she said is going to get repetitive over and over again when you're narrating. Um, other things like that, but my, minor tweaks, really. So I have my book. I'm excited. I don't have to change anything because I've edited it brilliantly and I know yes. it's ready to go. So I want to start recording. Right. What do I need to buy? Can I just pop in my earbuds and I'm good? 
You know, a lot of people try that, um, and a lot of people do that. So technically, can you do that? You can. But I would recommend doing something more. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And so while you could go spend thousands of dollars in a recording studio somewhere, we don't have to do that. Uh, the equipment that people use to record audiobooks, the professional grade, has come down significantly in, in the last few years. So there's only a few key pieces of equipment that people need. I always tell people the very first thing I want them to buy is a very good pair of headphones, not, not these. A very good pair of headphones, and that is so that you, the author who's also going to be the producer, can hear everything. And if you can't hear mistakes you've made, then that's a problem. So you'll, you'll need headphones to edit with. You need a very good microphone, um, and very good does not mean terribly expensive. Uh, there are some great USB microphones uh, that are cost about 100 bucks or so. Great. Buy one of those. Jeff's got the Yeti, and that's a very, very good microphone. It all depends on how good your voice sounds, so don't rush out and buy one. I always recommend going to guitar centers or whatever your local analog is and trying your voice out on, on a handful of those. So those are the first two things you buy. Uh, the second, or the I guess that would be the third thing, uh, the third thing that you would buy after that is something other than your computer to record with because computers have these interesting things called fans inside of them and all sorts of other noises that come up. So I like a solid state recording device that I can plug my microphone into, so keep that in mind. Um, I use a Zoom H4n to do most of the recording work that I do, so I can take it in the closet with me, put on the headphones, uh, get the microphone nice and situated in front of me, and record with all those beautiful sound dampening clothes around me, and it's pretty solid. You'd be amazed at the great quality books that are recorded by someone in the closet, and that's not a euphemism. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go right past my 37, wait, no, 39 jokes that I could make about <laughs> this uh, in the interest of time. Um, and, okay, so I've, I've got all this gear. I went out, I got, I've got my stool in my closet, and I've, you know, put in all the, the, the fluffiest clothes. Yep. Do I have to do everything myself, uh, or can I get people to help? Well, you don't have to do things yourself, and that's the beauty of this growing movement uh, of anything self-publishing, even self-audiobooks, is there are people who are willing to help. There are people who you can pay to narrate your book for you, or perhaps you've got a fantastic reader who is very good at this narration thing, and they can do it for you. Where a lot of authors get tripped up is in the production process. Even though the software to edit audio, in my opinion, is no more difficult than the software to edit text, uh, the reality is I come from an audio background, and I've, and I've done this for a while, and it's, it's a learning hurdle for some people. But it doesn't cost a lot of money to find someone who will take your raw audio and chop it up, if you will, put the appropriate uh, you know, serialization elements into it, edits, all those sorts of things that you would pay a regular text editor to do. You can pay people to help produce your work for you, and then also get the final cleanup audio files done. If, if that hurdle you feel is, too in, is insurmountable to you, Plenty of folks out there who do this stuff in the weekend. They'd love to help out. All right. So I pull in a couple people, a couple, you know, some voice talent. I get everything ready to go. Mm -hmm. I have it all edited. What are the marketplaces out there? Where do I go with this thing? Well, really, there's there's one gigantic marketplace to sell your audiobook, and that's called Audible. Audible is owned by Amazon. Not surprisingly, they want to be the 800-pound gorilla in every marketplace, and they certainly are. There really aren't all that many secondary markets for audiobooks. There are a few, but, but they're, they're, they are not legion. The problem with Audible is that indie authors, eh, not so much. Audible, while they have the largest library of audiobooks, getting into Audible is about as difficult as getting into any other major bookstore. Well, I guess there's only one now, Barnes & Noble. You really need to be with a publisher that's produced audio that creates that. They're not big, they're not keen on carrying independent author stuff. They have an offshoot called ACX, which I think is Audiobook Creator Exchange or some thing weird like that, that was ostensibly supposed to be a place where the self-published author could put their books, but that's not what really happened. Um, it was designed for the author who has a publishing deal, whose uh, their publisher has 
opted to not take their audio rights and so they connect authors and producers and editors and other sorts of values to get those pre-published books out there. Uh, the hope is that ACX will kind of change their tune and, and make it open wide for, for the rest of the indie authors out there. Um, which leaves us back to patiobooks.com, the site that I run. Of course the challenge with patiobooks.com compared to the other two is they charge money for their books. We give away books for free. So if you've already got books and you've got rights and you've got these sorts of things and you want to go the the please pay me to down my, download my auto book, try to work through ACX or through your publisher for Audible and barring that, come see us at, at patiobooks.com. We're, we're happy to list anything that follows our tech specifications as long as you're using this as a promotional tool and not necessarily a get rich quick tool, which in writing <laughs> doesn't work anyhow. Yeah. So uh, now patio books used to be a little bit more like podcasting where episodes would be released regularly and, and right. is that still the same or has that changed now? Well, patiobooks.com, we do serialized audiobooks and we distribute books in podcast form. So instead of one giant file for an audiobook that's 17 hours long, we probably want 32 or 33 individual 30 minute long episodes, probably broken up by chapters but not necessarily. And People can subscribe to a book and they'll get the individual episodes. They can also just go to the books page and download all of them right there in handy. But they are downloading discrete MP3 files that make up a book. It's not one gigantic file. The listener experience is about the same. You put them in a playlist, put them on your iPod or on your phone or whatever you listen to or on your computer and just download and listen away. But it is broken up by individual chapters. Though so the book is complete when, when you actually get the whole thing listened to. All right. So, uh, as we wrap this piece of it, any tips for somebody giving, uh, in, you know, giving this a, they're contemplating it. I want to give this a try. Uh, should they try recording with crummy uh, stuff they've got and see if they like it before they go out and spend money, or what's the first step or two that an indie author should take? Step one is always a good idea to know thy marketplace. You really need to understand this. You should be a listener. First, if you have no idea what an audiobook is, and most people do not, because the vast majority of people don't listen to audiobooks, become a student of the craft. Find those who are doing a really good job and listen. Step one. Step two would be find out if you can do it. I've got news for you. When you first record yourself and you listen to your voice on playback on your headphones, you will wonder who the hell that is. Everybody hates their voice when they first listen to it. That's fine. Remember, you're not recording it for you, recording it for the audience. So make sure you can deal with your own voice. You don't have any weird like lifts or other sorts of challenges which could cause issues, but you can probably get past the artifacts uh, of your voice. And the third thing is practice. Practice telling a story. Do not read your words on the page. Do not feel like you must enunciate every single word. It's not what people are looking for. They, they want it to sound natural, like the story's being told to them. If you can get those three things done, then maybe, just maybe, you can be one of the few proud independent audiobook producers, uh, whether it's on our site, your own site, or wherever. There's a lot of folks looking for this stuff, so uh, try it. I mean, the worst that can happen is you spend a little bit of time on it, and uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's time you can't, you're not spending towards writing, but if you find that you've got a real gift for this, man, there's a, a loyal audience out there that's looking for new and engaging content to listen to on a, on a regular basis, and you can be one of the few people that are supplying that. Why not? And personally, I think they're looking for many movie phone narrated oh, books. This God. is a trend that you're going to see. Killing me, Smalls. I don't think so. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Evo Terra, for all your wisdom on the world of audiobooks. Do you want to close this out? Uh, oh, I will do it, Mr. Movie Phone. No, God, no. If I listen to that any longer, I'll wind up throwing this beer through the through the thing. So that will wrap with me as a special guest here on the Books and Beer Hangout. We do this every Thursday night at 6 o'clock Pacific Time. That's 9 o'clock, I believe, Eastern Time. It's recorded here on Google+, Plus as well as available as it live on YouTube Live. For information about this, the links we talked about, you can find all that at booksandbeer.com. For education and insight about being a digital author today, you can find more about Jeff and I at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.